Good evening, everyone, and happy Saturday. I'm meteorologist Jasmine Lomax with your latest on Tropical Storm Beta as of the 7 p.m. update. So here's a look at the infrared satellite imagery. That system is still stationary, and that's not unexpected. It's about 330 miles east-southeast of Corpus Christi, Texas, with max sustained winds of 70 miles per hour. And the reason why it's stationary has to do with a little bit of the shear that's in the area. So I'll show you uh, what we're looking at as of right now. So there is a lot of shear, and those are those brighter colors that you see. So the blues and the greens and the oranges, reds, pinks, and purples, that's all dealing with wind shear. And when we talk about shear, it's the change in wind speed with height. So when there's high wind shear, which is what we're seeing, that means that the wind speed higher in the atmosphere is greater than the wind speed lower at the atmosphere. And that's something that sort of inhibits the development and intensification of these tropical systems. And it's also going to sort of steer the storm in a different direction. But because of this year, we actually saw some tropical moisture, some rain in the area. We also saw some gusty winds. And to take a look at the tropical track, the latest track of this system as of the 7 p.m. update, really not much of a change. We're still expecting that system to move north or west northwesterly, approaching the Texas coastline, possibly sometime time maybe late Monday or possibly on Tuesday. There's still a lot of uncertainty and that cone is very wide, especially once it begins, once we get to the latter half of the week. By Wednesday, that system starts to make a northeasterly turn, but how sharp the turn is determines where exactly the impacts will lie. Still, most of Louisiana is within that cone, so we could certainly continue to see impacts, and it's likely that we will see impacts as we move throughout the upcoming week. So I'll talk about the main threats, and those will be winds, of course, and rain. So let's start with winds. It's already gusty. We've been dealing with some wind gusts over the past 24 hours here in the capital city. We saw winds at 23 miles per hour as far as gusts are concerned. 28 in Lafayette, 29 in Lake Charles, Homa at 36. So the coastal areas have been seeing some higher wind gusts. That's to be expected with these tropical systems, and that's something that's going to continue. New Orleans at around 29 mile per hour wind gusts. Now I'll show you what one of our models is saying. This is the IBM graph as far as winds are concerned tonight. Grand Isle looking at 50 mile per hour winds. So uh, you may want to hold off on any boating plans that you may have planned tomorrow or in the coming days because those winds are going to be very strong and we're still looking at storms in the area. But I'll just take you through what else we're looking at. 36 mile per hour winds tonight and we'll stay around the 30s for much of the night and much of the day tomorrow. Uh, by 4.30 p.m., wind gusts of around 30 miles per hour, 37 in Grand Isle, New Orleans at 25. And again, staying with those 30, per, 30 mile per hour wind gusts, but possibly looking at 36, closer to that 40 range. So that's for Baton Rouge and New Orleans, Grand Isle at 40, and a lot of other areas in the 30s are very close to that mark, and that's going to continue as we move throughout the week. So that's going to be something to monitor. If you have any loose furniture outdoors, bring it in trash cans make sure that everything is secured and if you do have something that could easily be picked up by wind it's a good idea to bring those things inside now let's talk about what's probably on everyone's mind and that of course is the rain we're dealing with lots of tropical moisture in the area already and you can see that on our doppler radar some areas stayed completely dry today, but some areas saw some light rain, even some mist right now outside of our station. There are just some sprinkles, but the point is that there's a lot of moisture moving through the southeastern portion of the state. Most of the rainfall and the heaviest of the rainfall is along those coastal areas, and that's something that we also expect to continue. So just to show you some of the totals, this is a radar estimate and I'll show you uh, what we're looking at. This is over the past 24 hours here in Baton Rouge around the downtown area. Rainfall estimates of about half an inch. And when we look at this area in the green, we're talking about possibly uh, an inch and a half. So the grounds are very saturated around New Orleans. We are talking maybe one inch and around Homa and 
a little bit further south in the areas in the darker green, we're talking maybe two and a half inches. So some higher totals along the coast, which is to be expected. But the point is that the grounds are very saturated right now, and we're really looking at the potential for rain every single day over the next couple of days and through pretty much the end of next week. So that's going to increase the risk of flooding. And if we do see heavy rain at times, there will be that potential for flash flooding. So you want to make sure that you stay weather aware and of course follow along for updates. And as far as what we could be seeing, as far as rainfall totals are concerned, this is just a one to three day estimate for the weather prediction sensor. One and a half to two and a half inches possible around New Orleans, two to four inches areas east of uh, Mississippi and around Mississippi at under half an inch in areas a little bit closer to the coast uh, further towards southwestern Baton Rouge five to seven inches possible and remember this is only for the next one to three days these numbers are obviously going to increase over the next seven days now we're talking possibly five to seven inches across most of the state if not all of the state and some areas looking at 10 inches or maybe more and that does include Houston. So if you know any loved ones there, make sure that you're informing them and make sure they're staying weather aware with what's going on. And I'll show you what another model is saying. This is the GFS or the American model. And these are rain totals through uh, Sunday around midnight. So pretty much covering the next seven days. This model has us around six inches. A lot of areas including Jennings and Opelousas, is just under that five inch mark. Uh, some areas around five inches and along the coast Thibodeau and Homa possibly at seven inches of rain New Orleans in that six to seven inch range. So a lot of areas seeing some higher rain totals and that does look a little more likely and there's still a lot of disagreement on where exactly the storm does move after it moves toward the Texas coastline and where it moves is going to influence the impacts that we see here. So just to show you what some of the spaghetti models are saying, there's a lot of agreement on that northwest direction as it moves toward Texas, but where it goes after that is where we start to see a lot of uncertainty. And that's something that we'll have to continue to monitor in the coming days, but you will have pre plenty of time to prepare for the storm. Just make sure that you are staying weather aware and informed with the latest updates and what's going on with the system. And of course, with the track updates. Now, as far as timing for landfall is concerned, possibly sometime on Monday night. We can see the system make landfall. This, of course, could change right now. That system is stationary uh, and it is expected to make that northwestern turn. And as we continue to look through the rest of the week, according to this, our American model GFS, that system begins to move toward the northeast, bringing lots of rain and moisture into our area. And that's why we see the increased chance for rain as we move throughout the week. And we're looking at some higher rain totals as well. We're also seeing some alerts already in place for the system, even though it has not even made landfall and even though it's not expected to move toward Louisiana, there are still some watches and warnings in place. Areas in yellow under a tropical storm watch, areas in blue under a tropical storm warning, and where you see that tannish color, that is for a wind advisory, meaning that strong winds are expected and we already are seeing those gusty winds. So that's why we see that wind advisory and it will likely be extended going forward. Also, storm surge, the number one threat when we talk about tropical systems. Corpus Christi looking at a storm surge watch. Areas generally east of Corpus Christi through about Houston looking at a storm surge warning. And then another storm surge watch a little bit around the Louisiana and Texas coastline, including Lake Charles, unfortunately, an area that just got hit with Laura. We're talking about more impacts to that area and that could complicate some recovery efforts. So that's something that we will closely need to monitor. And if you are planning on helping with those recovery efforts heading to Lake Charles, this is something that you need to be aware of. The winds that we could see in that area, along with the rain, there will be the possibility for more widespread power outages. And in lime green, we do see a coastal flood advisory. So that's generally around the mouth of the Mississippi River. That includes our lakes. So 
there is the possibility for some flooding with this system and overall it's very busy. We are still in the peak of hurricane season even though we passed the official peak date. There is still so much going on. We're monitoring Tropical Storm Wilfred, which is expected to weaken into a tropical depression, possibly on Monday afternoon. Hurricane Teddy continues to be a powerful Cat 3 hurricane. Winds of 120 miles per hour, gusts of 150 miles per hour. Expected to stay away from the United States. However, there is the chance that it could bring some rain to portions of Canada. Also, post-tropical alpha is moving towards Spain, staying out of our area, and that will not be something that we are concerned about, but we're also monitoring this area in orange. Generally, it looks like it will move away from our area, but again, we're in the peak of hurricane season. There's that chance that we could see some more waves emerge off the coast of Africa, and there's the chance that we could see some more depressions and storms. So just make sure that you pay attention to what's going on here in our area, but also in the Atlantic. It's very, very busy, and we just crossed off two of the Greek alphabet letters, alpha and beta. Next on the list is gamma, so that is going to be one of those systems, or that's going to be another name that we could potentially cross off. Maybe if that system, that wave in orange does get a name, it would be gamma, so on this list, those are just seven of the first Greek alphabet letters. So it's, it's busy. That's the main thing. It's very busy. We've been dealing with a lot. We just dealt with Sally, and before that it was Laura. It seems almost back to back at this point. But the most important thing that you can do is make sure that you are prepared. Make sure that you stay weather aware and you know what's going on and that you follow along with our updates. We, of course, will have entire team coverage going forward to provide you with updates on this system. So again, we just want to make sure that you pay attention and that we give you the most information to help you stay prepared and stay weather ready, ready. And I just want to show you this, prepare, do not panic. So it's never a bad idea to refill emergency supplies like water and batteries. Check your generator and your weather radio. Make sure that it's up and working and always plan for a category higher. Right now, this system is forecast to stay a tropical storm, but there is that potential that it could strengthen into a category one hurricane. It's over warm Gulf waters, but it is encountering some shear. That's something that could inhibit intensification, but that does not mean that it will not happen. So just plan for a category higher just in case and always check your yard for loose belongings over the coming days because wind gusts have already started. They are here. So going forward, we're expecting more rain and more wind in the picture, but make sure to stay prepared. That's the main thing. And again, we'll have more updates for you. We'll be back on air after I believe baseball on Fox and then we'll be on for NBC as well at 10 p.m. and that's around the time when the next update comes on. So if you do want the latest on this system, please tune in uh, around 10 p.m. for NBC and of course you can watch our Fox newscast after baseball. Tomorrow we'll be back, uh, well I'll be back here to provide you with more updates. Then on Monday, Ashley, Jesse and I will all be here. That's when we expect the system to make landfall. Hopefully by that time we know a little bit more about where it could potentially go and we'll be able to provide that information for you. But in the meantime, just stay weather aware for more information. You can always head to BRProud.com or you can download our free BR Proud app. Stay safe and stay weather aware and happy Saturday everyone.